Okay, so in this video we're going to introduce some um, common components in electrical circuits and then look at how to draw those circuits and represent them in circuit diagrams. So, common component number one, um, a lamp. Okay, so a lamp uh, has two symbols for it. Uh, one is like this, which indicates that it is a what we call an indicator lamp, and that is like the little, um, you know, it'll be behind a switch or in your oven if that's got a light in it. It might be an LED, which is a different component, or it might be an indicator sort of lamp. A lamp used for lighting, a brighter one, so the ones you might see up on your roof, um, or like this one, they're designed for lighting, so they will normally be drawn like that. Um, often in these circuits, I know that symbol is on there, but we'll use this symbol to draw this lamp because it kind of depends how you use it. In this case, it's not really for lighting, it's just to investigate the circuit. So things to be careful of, don't do what I've done here, make sure it's all neatly kind of connected up. Just keep it neat and these lines should be drawn with a ruler, so this is just for demonstration purposes. Now, um, that is our lamp. So another common component, uh, in fact we'll do that one next, is this. Uh, this is a cell, in there is a D, what we call a D battery, but for us that is a single cell represented with that symbol there. So if you were going to draw that, the short line, the longer line goes across. Now what you can see on here, the longer line is the positive side, the other side is the negative. So on this cell, that's the positive side, that's the negative side, you've got to remember it. The way I remember that is this longer line is long enough that you could split it in half, move one side up and make a plus out of it. Uh, and that's how I remember which side is which, whereas the negative side is just it's only enough for the, the single line. So that is our cell. Um, along a similar line actually, so this is a battery pack. And what we call it is a battery of cells. And what you can see, one, two, three, four cells in there. So what I'm going to do is draw the four cells that make that up and this would be my battery of cells. Now another way of representing this is just to draw a cell on the two sides like this and put a dash line in the middle. But with this, you know exactly how many cells there are. With this one, you need to label it um, with the total what we call potential difference measured in volts, sometimes referred to as the voltage um, in it. So both of these are six volts, so two versions of that. But you tend to use this if you know the exact number of cells, this one if you don't. Um, two other components, three other components we're going to introduce here is a push switch. So you can see the symbol for that identified on top and that is a push switch which means you press the switch down to engage the switch that's connected and that's not. So on the symbol you can see that you push the switch down, the switch connects, perfect. We've also got um, these two things, one is called an ammeter, one is called a voltmeter. Now We'll start with the ammeter, as it says, it's just a big A in the middle, and that represents something called current. That's a bit too wobbly. So it represents current, and the V is a voltmeter, represents potential difference, or sometimes referred to as voltage. So it's the unit, the volt, the unit, the amp. That represents those two devices. We're not going to get into what those two devices do here, that will be in one of the other videos, but um, just to introduce that that is the physical components that they represent. Um, the other component we've got left to look at, well it's not really a component, it's the connections. This is a load of wires. Uh, kept like this for neatness, I know it doesn't look like it sometimes. But your wires are what connect everything together and this sort of kit is what you'll normally get in school and what it allows you to do is to connect components together like that. Okay, um, It doesn't matter, the colour of it doesn't matter, that's just the colour of the plastic on the outside. The wire itself is a copper wire in the middle of it um, 
apart from thickness and length or copper wires, they're made of very similar, the same stuff, some form of copper. Um, so that's just your connection, okay? Now, the next bit we're going to look at is some simple, what we call series circuits, um, how to make them and how to represent them. Just put all that stuff over to one side. So if I put the heading, series circuits. Now a series circuit is one that only has one route from your cell or battery round. So if I take a very simple circuit here, and the way I'm going to connect this up is I'm going to go from the positive side of the battery to keep the wires neat to the push switch. Then I'm going to go from um, that time I leave that one. So what we tend to do just for convention is to connect the red side to the positive, black side to the negative, and you hit that grey area in the middle where um, it's not directly connected to positive or negative. So I tend to use the red ones there, just because then you can very easily identify the negative side. So that's our circuit connected up, and in theory, if I push the switch, the bulb lights up. Okay, for that bulb, that is quite a small cell. Um, there's not quite enough potential difference there um, to run the circuit properly, hence it's a bit dim. But you can see it working uh, with the push switch there. So push it down, it's on. Um, well, let go of the switch and it switches off. So as a circuit diagram, what I'm going to do is exactly as it's laid out here, even the right way around for the cell. So the cell is that way around. I've got the push switch down here. And I prefer to lay out the components. And I've got my lamp over here, which I'm going to draw as an indicator lamp in this circuit. Now, this is the bit where you should be using a ruler. I'm going to give it a go, but what it tends to do is mark the pen. So we'll see how, smudge the pen even, see how it goes. It's not a complete disaster, so we'll keep using this ruler for the moment. Okay, so that is our series circuit and that is the circuit diagram. So as you saw, I drew the circuit component correctly um, as is defined by the common, well, what is accepted as the circuit diagram for that. Um, the other thing I've done is not just drawn squiggly lines for the wires, I've done them straight lines in this sort of boxy shape. Now you can see in the real world, the wires tend to get a little bit messy, they tend to kind of loop around a bit and it's sometimes difficult to follow. But in the circuit diagram, we always draw it as this kind of boxy shape and give things a bit of space. So I'm not going to come in here and just do a tiny thing here or connect directly to there. So it's these sort of boxes, um, nice right angles, uh, it keeps things neat. So this is my series circuit. Now, if I wanted to, I could give it a bit more power by replacing this with a six volt battery pack. There you go, very bright bulb. Um, what I need to do though is modify this. So thankfully, because I've got this board, one, two, three, four cells now. Just keeping those neat. Please do this bit with a ruler. Don't do what I'm doing, just doing it freehand. And that uh, represents your battery pack now. So that is your circuit, and that is the correct version of it. Now, I'm going to add in another component. I'm going to add in another bulb. Um, and just to help see there's different sides of the circuit, I'm going to use a black wire here for no reason other than it helps kind of see the two sort of follow the circuit round. So you've got your battery, the positive side, connected round to the push switch that goes to a lamp, goes to a lamp connected to this side of the battery. I just push the wires on so you can see all that. Now on the circuit diagram, of course, I've not added in my bulb yet. 
and I put that in between this bulb and the push switch. So there we go, there's my second bulb. Now if you can, try and make it a bit neater than I have. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub out both bulbs. I'm going to draw the two in there. And as you can see with a ruler, I'm going to connect that up. Honestly, your teachers, everyone will thank you for using a ruler. So your whiteboard is a little bit different, but keep it neat, use a ruler. Um, so when I turn that on, you can see both lamps have lit there, so it's a good circuit. Now, common things that are mistake made things as a mistake is something like this, where someone doesn't quite connect the circuit. You see at this point here, there is a break in there. That will be marked down. You must make sure that everything actually touches and corners are notorious for that. Doing something like this, yeah, that'll do. Not good. Uh, the second thing is use a ruler. Um, a series circuit, then, what defines that, hopefully you remember from earlier, is there's one path from the positive to the negative side of your battery. So here you've got that one path. Now, what we're going to look at now is what's called a parallel circuit. And for that, um, I'm going to rub this out. I'm going to disconnect this circuit, put the stuff over there, and put a new head in. I'm going to do it in blue this time because I can. Parallel circuits. Now for this, I'm going to use the start with the battery pack again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a bulb here and I'm going to place a bulb here. Now, a parallel circuit has separate branches from the uh, battery pack. So it has separate branches that the current can go around the circuit. And what I'm going to do is connect these up like this, and I'm going to create some branches. Now, I know it starts to get a bit messy here, and in fact, just because of the space available, this isn't brilliant practice, but it just helps keep it tidy here. I'm actually just going to put a little loop in this to help keep it tidy. So, what I've done, I've gone from the negative side of the cell, of the battery even, come up to this junction, and it's one part's going through this lamp, one part's going through this lamp. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create another branch on this side and I'm going to have one wire, just tie a little loop in it to keep the wire short, go into there and another wire going to here. Now if I lay this out so that, that is hopefully a bit more clear about what is going on. So what's happening, your two wires come out and go to a junction point here. At these junctions, one branch is going through this bulb and it can split and go down this branch here. So there's no longer one path for the current to take. Um, it's now got two paths that it can take. And the way I'm going to draw that oops, in this circuit is I'm going to draw my cell, so my battery pack, and this time I'm going to use the dashes. I'm going to put my two bulbs in. Using the ruler to keep it all nice and neat for me try not to smudge any of the pen because it's a dry wipe marker there we go so that is the circuit diagram for this circuit if we follow that you've got this wire here which is going from here to this junction point 
At this junction point, you've got one wire going to this bulb, one wire going to this bulb. At this point, you've got this wire going to the junction, you've got this wire going to the junction, and that one wire goes back. Um, so if I sort of follow around the pen of my finger, it goes round that way, down this way, through the bulb, back to the cell, and then you've got the option where you're going from this side all the way up to the far bulb, coming through, back to the cell. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is modify my circuit diagram. I'm going to put a push switch here and I'm going to put an ammeter here. So in your head what I want you to do is think about how I need to change this circuit so try and keep ahead of me. Now what I'm going to do, the push bulb is physically there so I'm physically going to put that there and the ammeter is over here so I'm just going to put that over there somewhere. Now you can see there's now where there was one wire we're going to need two wires so I'm going to disconnect that and connect that just shorten it a little bit sorry it's slightly limited on kit connect that to here and connect the other side of that to our battery. So that you've got your battery around to the push switch, push switch up to the branch point. Perfect. Now this one is on, you've got this wire coming from the cell to the junction, then it's on the branch that goes from the junction up to this bulb which is the far one which is going to be somewhere along this wire. So I'm going to disconnect that and on an ammeter you can see there's a plus and a minus and what you can see is that side of the, step, the circuit leads to the negative. So I'm going to put this into the plus and I'm going to connect this side into our branch here and turn the ammeter on. Now what I'm going to do is just spread all this out a little bit so hopefully You'll see everything. I'm going to put the ammeter sideways. Look a bit funny, but it would just help with the clarity of the circuit. So, when I push the switch, the circuit comes to life. And what's happening, you've got the two sides of the battery connect this side through the push switch to these two junctions. The first branch is the same, you can see that here. The second branch between here and here goes through the bulb through the ammeter and back down to there. And that is as we see in the circuit diagram. So if I do this, you should be able to see everything. And there we go. So that is your circuit running. You can see there's 0 0.321, 322 amps um, in this circuit. So just a reminder that what defines a parallel circuit is you've now got two options. Um, for what can where the electricity can go um, and that is important um, it's not the fact that it's two it's more than one so a series circuit has one possible route a parallel circuit has more than one possible route um, and that is your introduction uh, if you can draw down those two circuit diagrams and what would be even better is if you don't look at this cover this bit up try and draw this circuit and then check with this. In fact, just to help you with that, I'm going to cover it with the voltmeter for 10 seconds. So you can pause the video, you can draw the circuit, and check it against mine. And do that with the other circuits as well.